What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Minecraft 1.20 Optifine for the best possible performance. Now, there are multiple performance mods, such as Sodium, that you could be using on the Fabric platform, but this is specifically for Optifine if you choose to use that in the vanilla version or modded version of Minecraft. Now, I won't be diving into Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get the most out of your PC there. This guide's only going to focus on Minecraft 1.20 Optifine. If you'd like to learn how to install it, you'll find a link down there as well. All right, so firing up Minecraft 1.20, you'll immediately head into the Options section over here, then Video Settings, and you'll make sure that Optifine is written in the bottom left corner here, and you have the Shaders tab available. Assuming you see both of these, congratulations, you've successfully installed Optifine properly. Now, all that's left to do is to mess around with some settings. I won't go into detailed visual explanations of why things work. Instead, you'll find my 1.19 optimization guide down below, where I go into the details of showing you the difference by changing some of these settings. This is just going to be a super quick update crash course showing you what you should change. First of all, if you have Minecraft shaders installed and turned on, they are going to tank your FPS, regardless of what graphics card or setup you have. You can have the most powerful PC in the world, and shaders are still going to slash your FPS, if not in half or even more. I'd highly recommend choosing a lighter shader, preferably one without motion blur, unless you're really struggling with micro stuttering. Motion blur can help hide that, but it can make a lot of people quite sick, especially if pushed too high. Otherwise, disable shaders entirely if you really need some more FPS. It is, of course, a visual improvement, so if you want to have them, you can, of course, have them. Then, to improve our performance and take it from maybe 10 to 30 FPS, First of all, we'll have a look at render distance. I'd recommend turning this down if you have less RAM in your PC. Otherwise, you can crank it up and things should be pretty good. I wouldn't recommend pushing it anywhere above maybe 24, especially if you have shaders installed. But if you have tons of RAM available, you can push it up really high, though you may need to adjust the amount of RAM in the launch options for Optifine. As you can see here with the explanation at the bottom, with very little RAM, we need to push this all the way down to the bottom at around 512 megs of RAM available for Minecraft. You can push it to 32, for example, but it will be very resource demanding. The higher you push this, the lower your FPS will drop. So I'd recommend putting it at maybe 24 at max if you have a crazy good PC. Otherwise, the only reason you'd raise it more is for really good looking screenshots. You can't push it over 16 for multiplayer servers. That's as high as it'll go. So don't expect to see too far there. The lower you drop this, the more FPS you're going to get. It's quite a linear effect. Then simulation distance. You can lower this as well if your CPU is struggling. Though, of course, this won't have any effect on multiplayer servers, as far as I understand. Usually, you'd want these two to match, so I'll just crank it up to match right about there, as I do have quite a powerful CPU as well. Then, graphics in the top left, I'd recommend moving this to fast, but by changing this, it changes the amount of rain, snow, transparency effects, such as leaves. If you have it on fast, you may not be able to see through leaves, for example, like you do here. They're just all blocky like this, which you may not like. I'm personally not a huge fan, so you can push it up to fancy, but moving it to fabulous will take a bit of your FPS away from you. You can hit F3 at any time to track your FPS usage. In the top right, you'll find your memory allocation and usage. It usually goes up and down. And in the top left, you'll find your ping as well as your FPS. That's written all the way in the extreme top left corner. I'm getting around 165-ish average here. All right, so I'm heading back to options, video settings. There's a few settings we can mess around with here. I'd recommend uncapping your max frame rate here to unlimited, but if you start getting screen tearing, you may need to push this all the way down to VSync, which locks it at the same frame rate as your monitor, which will be 60, 30, 160, whatever your monitor is. If you notice that you're recording and for some reason your OBS and things like that are lagging, your recordings are coming out weird, make sure that this max frame rate is set a little bit below the amount of FPS you're getting to leave some of your graphics card available for other programs on your computer. Then smooth lighting, this could really mess around with how some objects look. You can push this between on and off and play around with the setting here to get more FPS. But of course, your 
Mileage will vary. It really depends where you are in the world and what you'd like to see. 50% is pretty good. Then enter these shadows. This is an absolute last resort. I'd recommend always having this on. That way you get the little circle shadow under objects and people. If you have this off, there will be no shadows for moving things, which is really weird looking. Then dynamic field of view. If you find that when you start sprinting, you lose FPS and it makes it quite distracting, I'd recommend turning this off. Otherwise, leave it on if you like how the field of view changes when you start sprinting. Dynamic lights are usually off by default, so I'd recommend leaving them off. It's probably for the best. Now, heading into the details section. This is where we can really get some crazy FPS. First of all, clouds, looking at the very top, I'd recommend setting them to fast, but if you don't like the flat, you can set them to fancy. Otherwise, turn them off completely, but fast will really give you the biggest change in FPS. Now, trees, you can set to fast, where you can't see through them. Otherwise, smart, which is really good, it only renders the block closest to you, though you can definitely see quite far through these trees. And finally, fancy is the normal default where trees don't look so weirdly hollow. Usually, I'll leave this on fancy, but if you're looking for FPS and you like the fancy look, smart is definitely the way to go, but it could look a little bit weird. Then sky, sun and moon, I'd recommend having on. Fog set to fast is good enough, but you can raise this to fancy just in case fog looks a little bit weird while you're playing the game. View bombing. Autosave indicator, I'd usually leave on. There's nothing really to change there for FPS. Vignette is completely a user preference. It'll have a tiny impact on performance. Usually leaving it at default or fast is good enough. Entity distance, I'd recommend leaving it where it is. But the higher you crank this, the further you can see mobs. Eh, just leave it at 100% and you should be fine. Cloud height, there's no reason to change this. Rain and snow, you can change this off completely here if you prefer not seeing rain and snow. Otherwise, default or fast is good enough. Stars, there's no reason to turn them off, so I'm on, unless you're really clawing for FPS, but in that case, you'd really be turning everything off. Show capes, on once again. Fog start, I'll leave it where it is, and the rest of these are pretty much where they should be. Biome blend over here changes how many blocks between biomes. You'll see a transition, moving from a dark swamp to a bright birch forest or something like that, you'll see the colors slowly shift. The higher that you push this, the more that blending happens over a larger distance, meaning that it's less noticeable and maybe prettier looking. But to be honest, you can lower this or leave it where it is. If you need a bit more FPS, the impact won't be huge. Then animations. Usually you'll leave all of these on, but you can turn them off if you're looking for a bit of extra performance. Then quality. These are pretty much where they should be at default. Everything's set to the way that it should be. You can turn some of these on if you like how better grass and snow look, for example. To be honest, I don't really notice a difference, so I leave everything as is. And that's pretty much a free FPS boost, unless you want to turn some of these things on. I would recommend leaving anisotropic filtering off, as this will usually use up a bit more RAM and VRAM on your PC, but of course you can raise this if you want higher quality textures, or at least as high quality as you can get. It shouldn't cost a huge amount of FPS. Finally, anti-aliasing, I'd always recommend having this off, and if you change this, you need to restart your system. That essentially gets rid of the jagged edges around lines and objects, but having it turned on will really attack your FPS. Then performance, once again, you can gain a little bit of performance by messing around in here. You can use render regions, which I would definitely recommend, especially if you're pushing up to higher view distances. Fast render, once again, you can turn this on for more optimized rendering. Smart animations, the same goes for this. And fast math as well. Those are some really good options that you should set to on just for a huge FPS increase. Smooth FPS, I'd usually leave off unless you're noticing dramatic fluctuations in FPS. Smooth world, you can leave on as default. Dynamic updates, you can enable if you wish, but you'll save a bit of FPS by leaving this off. Chunk updates, I'd leave as default. Lazy chunk loading. Once again, leaving it on is probably better for single player and server loading, and leaving it as threaded is probably the best option for the chunk builder. Finally, in the other section, there's not much here other than the lagometer that you may want to show. This is really nerdy stats about how your FPS is looking in the bottom left. It jumping around quite drastically means that you're getting a lot of FPS spikes in your PC, and you may want to check your settings. Show FPS. If you turn off F3, for example, you'll see just the FPS in the top left corner. So already I've gone from maybe 60 or however many FPS all the way up to 1000 at points, otherwise 400 usually. That's a huge, huge improvement. The rest of these settings here, there's not really too much you need to change. That's really all you need to worry about. So anyways, I hope you found this video useful. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.